Hey guys, welcome back to the series. In this video, number two, we will be going over Roblox Studio for absolute beginners and also intermediate users. In this video, we will be going over studio navigation, understanding what the heck we're looking at, inserting objects, properties, terrain, and finishing it off with plugins. That's a whole lot, but it's really important for us to understand and use the software to its full potential. All right, guys, so to open Studio, we're going to hit the Create button. From here, you can either download Studio, or if you already have it, you can click on the button on the lower left to open Studio. If you have Studio downloaded, you could also link it to your desktop. That's going to open us to this page where there's preset places. Some of these are made by Roblox, and a lot of these are really great learning tools as you kind of develop and understand how to navigate the software a bit better. So for now, open a simple base plate. All right, guys, now that we've hopped in our studio, let's get started. At the top bar, we have file, home, model, avatar, test, view, and plugins. File is going to be most important as it has game settings where we can save the game to Roblox, or it has studio settings, which is really important for primarily how fast you can navigate the map and under render rendering your performance or studio quality level. I have mine at 21, but set it to whatever device that you are developing on. I have my graphics under automatic and frame rate under automatic as well. So for now, let's select and move our object around. Make sure your select tool is enabled and you can drag and move around an object in your 3D workspace. So say we throw it over here and we can't really see it that much. Let's learn how to navigate. Primarily, you'll be using your scroll wheel for zooming, your right click mouse button for looking around. You can combine those two to get around the map pretty well. Then you'll include your WASD keys and this will let you zoom. And if you can combine all three, you can get around your maps pretty quickly. All right, now that we know how to move around Studio and move parts around, let's actually add a brand new part. So under our home bar, we can click on part to add our very own part. Press F. F will help us focus on the part and zoom into it really quickly. While you're using F, your pan will also circle around the part, which is really helpful. So our properties are how this part is defined in the space. So we have how it appears, data, transformation, pivots, collisions, and a bit more below it. We really only care about for the building aspect, the color and the material. So let's go ahead and build a bed. I'm going to make it brown. I'm going to resize it to the proper bed scale. And under model, I don't like working at such a low detail. I would prefer to work at a higher detail. So I'll start at a one stud rather than a 0 0.1. I'm going to add a wood material to it. I'm going to control C, control V to copy and paste. Control Z is how to undo. And I wanted that, so I'm going to redo that. I'm going to color it white like a mattress would be. Then I'm going to, instead of copy and pasting, I'm going to duplicate so it stays inside of it. I, I want this to be a red blanket, so I'm going to now increase my move or decrease it back because I only want to slightly have it covering all the pieces. And I'm going to extend it. Perfect, and then I'm going to copy and paste, and this is going to be the pillow. I'm going to scale it down properly, and there we go. I have my bed. So right now, it's just loose parts. I'm going to click and hold and group over until everything is selected. Hit Control G. This will group it into a model. Then I can name it bed. And now I have a bed. Models are really important because it's a way to organize your parts, meshes, and just general properties that will be held in your workspace. And having good organizational skills is important for both engineers and artists. Okay, let's go over a few other keybinds. So you can hit Control C and Control V to copy and paste. 
You can move that object around if you want another bed, or you could also duplicate it. And then you can also hold Alt while you are in the space and it'll focus on specific parts or pieces. That way, you know, I'm trying to color this bed here, but it won't let me if I'm just clicking on the model. But when you hold Alt and then click, you can focus on that part specifically and recolor it. Okay, guys, next, let's go a little bit over the view tab. So under view, this is how we set up how we're going to use the different tools. So you'll see explore and properties. You always want these open. And if you unclick them, you can always click them to add them back. The output is also important. This shows you bugs and when you've published games and basically the entire output of how the game is reacting to certain different things. Not only that, but you can resize them. So if you need more space or less space in your 3D view, um, you can resize them however you want. You can click and hold them and change where they are. So you can rearrange the studio however you're comfortable with. Anything I don't have checked on here right now, I don't usually use. So feel free to add whatever you think you'll use. Not only that, but you can actually click this and add this on top of here. And you'll see I have a small array of different tools that I'm already using. All right, guys, our final step. I'm going to teach you a little bit about Roblox's built-in terrain tools. So up at the top under view, you're going to click on your terrain editor. And this is how you add terrain to your world. So you can do, you know, you can design your world with 3D parts from Roblox, or you can do it with terrain. And I really love terrain because it's just so fun and artsy. So I'm going to click under edit under my terrain editor. And basically you can just draw terrain onto your world. And this is super just really creative and fun. And it just reminds me of painting and artwork. And I really love the creativity that you can get with this. Um, so now that I've drawn it in, I'm actually going to paint. So let's say I want to create a road. So I'm going to find my ground tool, increase the brush size a little bit. And I'm going to create a road. So just a really basic road that branches off into paths. And let's say, I think these colors are absolutely hideous. We can go under workspace, click under terrain and expand our material colors. So again, our properties are how we define the things in the environment. And it's really important tool to use. So I want my ground to be, you know, brown. Ground is brown and a little bit happier, a little bit lighter. Then I want my grass to be nice and vibrant and bright and green. And that already looks a lot more lively to me. Next, let's say I want to just, you know, give my grass a little bit more diversity. I'm going to add... Um, some leafy grass, some just some leafy grass streaks in my map, right? So I'm noticing that this is also a dull color. So after I paint some of this in, I'm going to go back to my leafy grass and just kind of color match it a little bit. And I like to, you know, kind of keep them the same color as much as I can. Um, and usually have one darker or one lighter. So. I like this quite a bit and I think I want to add a little bit more texture to my road as well. So I'm going, going to add a little muddy outline on my road, kind of leaving my clicks a little bit so I can space it out. Then back here, I'm going to make this an actual muddy, nice muddy brown. So this is what I would start with. You know, you have a, a really nice painting here and then you can sculpt it. So you can actually raise and lower the terrain. I'm going to uh, raise the grass up and the strength is already high as it can go. So it, it's pretty slow, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so if you're trying to create hills and stuff, usually it's easier to just, um, it's easier to draw, you know, to draw it. And then from here, you can actually, um, you could sculpt this. So. I'm going to set the bottom so I could, you know, create it like this. It's a little bit high, so I'm just going to lower it. And I'm going to make my plane locked on. So, you know, you could create these giant cliffs if you wanted. Um, 
then what you could do if you wanted was paint these. You can um, smooth these down so it just has like a more natural rise to it. And because we paint on the bottom, there is sometimes um, kind of like a section or division on the bottom of it that you just want to smooth out. So from here, I would use my subtraction tool and I would actually kind of chew away at this terrain and try to bring it down. So I really like terrain tools. I think they are super helpful and really good to use. All right, guys, that's the end of today's video. Our next video will go over studio plugins and studio lighting. And finally, game performance and optimization, which is super important for developing games on Roblox. If you guys have any questions about Roblox Studio, please leave them in the comments and I'll see if I can clear them up as well in the next video. Thank you all so much for being here in today's video. I know it went over time, but there's a lot of information to get through. So these videos will just be as long as it takes me to get through all this information. Please like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.